there is a temple outside Mumbai where right. I was just like awestruck. People around me were screaming, falling down. It is called Bhutan. It's a, it's a set rule that they would have to do it every year. No. Otherwise, they are going to face the wrath of the Bhutan. Like what happened? People will not have a girl to get married with. Yes, can we organize a Bhutan? <laughs> no, no, <he's> like... <laughs> You've interacted with a deity? Yes. Wanna share that experience? Um. Whoa! It's a temple dedicated to Subramanya, Kartikeya. You see Bollywood so heroines going there? Yes. Why specifically? The deity cannot talk. Uh, I have a daughter. He may ask, how does this deity know I have a daughter or not? I meant to say, will the deity hit the person? Wow. He may just slap heart. Why did someone get heart slapped? Probably hmm? the deity that I'm worshipping right now. I've been told not to talk about it often. I feel that since I've started worshipping that deity, things have started flowing much faster in my life. This episode, a lot of people would count it as like paranormal. It seems so ethereal. It seems so above human life. I would think the same if it was three years back. So we've done a bunch of Tantra episodes in the past, but this episode with Ritvik Subramania is heavily about what Kantara was about. Kolas, the different rituals, the different Tantric practices that are part of Western and Southwestern India. This is a subject by itself and you'll understand why I'm saying that if you complete the entire episode. Lots of spiritual conversation in this one. Lots of cultural conversation in this one. If you enjoyed Kandara and if you want to know more about the subject, this is the episode for you. This is Ritwik Bhai on TRS. another episode of TRS. If you're watching the video version of this episode, it's the first time we're using our new gear. That gets me very excited about this particular art form. But it gets me even more excited to know that we have Ruthwik Bhai in the house. Thank you so much. My honor and pleasure. So you're the authority on a very peculiar niche that's only present in the southern part of India. And maybe, I would go as far as saying, maybe only Karnataka? Karnataka and Kerala. And Kerala. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's a very particular part of the earth. Uh, and the weird thing is that most people from India don't truly understand your niche. So, two questions for you. Yeah. Firstly, how are you? Fantastic. Okay. Yeah. I was great and after coming to this studio, I'm even more great. Well, thank you for being here, sir. Yeah. Second, uh, what is the niche that we're speaking about in your own words? See the term Bhutha. Uh, if I say Bhutha in any of the Indic languages, they would come up with a negative connotation. Like Bhut, Pishach, Preet, all that. They think ghost. They think ghost. In a, in a very simple term, they think it as a ghost with a negative connotation. But Bhutha in Tulu is the upper Brahmsha form of Putam. Uh, Sanskrit word Putam. Putam means clarified or purified. In a very simple term, we can say Bhuta as a positive nature spirit. Okay. Which is there for the protection, security and welfare of the people in Tulunadu. When I say Tulunadu, Tulunadu is the southwestern part of Karnataka, which starts from say uh, Bindur or Kundapur. That's a small town. From there to Mangalore in the south. And it goes even further and enters Kerala all the way till Nileshwar, somewhere near Kochi. Okay. Yeah. So this is the uh, niche of Bhuta Radhane. It's a parallel system of positive spirits present, very much present in that part of the country. Why does it stop at the edges of that stretch? We, that land is called as Parashurama Kshetra. So that is the land set to be built, uh, reclaimed from the sea, from Parushrama. So that entire stretch is built by Parushrama. You want to give us the story a little bit? Yeah, uh, it's a very simple story. Uh, Parushrama takes around the earth, killing Kshatriyas for 21 times. Uh, we see that, we hear that in all of the Puranas. So once he completes that cycle of 21, he comes back and people tell him that where is your own native? Because you have traveled the world, you have killed uh, people who are bad. Um, so why don't you have a land of yourself? That is when Parshurama decides to create a land 
and then he throws his axe that is why he is called as parashu because he his name is rama bhargava rama he has a parashu in his hand that is the axe he throws into the sea fearing that parashu sea goes back so we, we have in bandra we have sea reclamation hmm. very similarly we have seen that in our puranas done by parashurama so that reclamation of the land is from karwar in the north that's the karnataka goa border to nileshwar or thrissur in the south in kerala that entire stretch is called as parashurama kshetra okay so every day when we do sandhya vandana we say i mean kaliyuga prathama kande jambu dwipe godavari dakshini tire bharata kande parashurama kshetra so we have that mention in all our scriptures so that is a very 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 unique land uh, nowhere to be seen elsewhere in the world and the people they are more chilled out than usual <laughs> absolutely is that true they are chilled out they are spiritual uh, they are very good at heart so they are a mix of everything okay yeah this is one thing you get to learn in mumbai if you interact with the shetty community enough true. and there's a true. huge shetty community in mumbai true uh, the stereotype about shetties <laughs> outside the shetty community yeah. is that okay and i'll tell you when i hang out with my sindhi or punjabi bros <laughs> we love shetty bros okay, okay. but what we talk amongst each other is that <laughs> all of you guys have a very similar vibe like you can spot a shetty person correct a very <laughs> relaxed very easy going but it's also a little bit uh, of like they don't take shit from anybody kind of vibe very true very so true. Yeah. it's either like fully aggressive towards mm. like enemies mm. or fully brotherly towards 99% of the people they meet correct um, very true and i feel traditionally speaking the culture comes from bhut aradhana yes and other mm. rituals i feel like because that stretch of land is so spiritual um maybe all those communities have been blessed with this edge absolutely yeah okay so uh, see like i told you it's a parashurama kshetra so we have a three trinity worship there not the vedic trinity uh, three fold worship we can say one is the uh, worship of the vedic gods like shiva vishnu subramanya ganapati devi shakta worship everything that's one fold second fold is the naga worship uh, since it was the land of nagas so we have taken that land from them so we worship them so we believe they were our ancestors because mm. they were holding that land uh, beneath the sea before parashurama reclaimed so that is the land of nagas third the most important is the land of uh, since it's the land of bhutas also so we worship them as well so we have this is the only unique thing uh, that that is no way to be seen elsewhere in india so this is the three fold worship that we do we i mean all three are important hmm. so shiva if if i am a practicing shaivite then i will worship shiva at the same time i'll go to a naga naga bana it's a place dedicated to nagas we enter that only on uh, say nag panchmi day otherwise it's totally closed nobody enters that what's inside it's a nagabana um, we see snakes there we see king cobras we see especially we see nagas cobras so it's it's a very uh, spiritual place dedicated only for the use and livelihood of nagas so humans don't enter there okay. we don't interfere into their matter okay so that's nagabana that's also seen only in dakshin kannada and northern part of kerala malabar okay the malabar region and the third one is the bhutakola so uh, bhutaradhane so that is very unique and in every property if i am a mangalorean if i am a person belonging to south kanra then i will have bhutakone kone in tulu or kannada means a room dedicated to bhutas so it is there in every property a room dedicated to yeah, bhutas yeah a room like we have a pray, prayer room God, god's room likewise we have a bhutakola uh, bhutakone okay um i never heard of bhutakola until i heard of kantara right. and then someone spoke about kantara on the show then i went and watched the movie right uh i'm actually a little surprised as a practicing hindu that i hadn't heard of this before kantara mm -hmm. but you know maybe on a metaphysical level as rajashi nandi has told me many times over that it's the will of the deities to spread their knowledge when the time is right or spread knowledge about themselves when the time is right correct 
this is such a wide and thick topic i actually don't know where to begin uh so let's begin with a pop culture angle which mm-hmm. is kantara right uh do you want to talk very briefly about the movie especially for people who haven't watched it and i'm hoping that we have a lot of international viewers also who have no idea what we're talking about correct hmm. so maybe you want to give a bit of a 101 on hindu practices also panjurli let's talk about panjurli panjurli is the main deity which is uh, you know depicted in the movie so panjurli is one entity which we have seen references in varaha or any of the vedic scriptures wherein uh, like you you have heard about dasha avatar yes so there is matsya kurma varaha so during the varaha avatar varaha takes the earth on it, on its teeth or the horns varaha basically means a white boar shweta varaha means white boar so he lifts the earth from the ocean and with his two teeth so once he lifts he starts sweating and that sweat starts to drop in in the southwestern region of india so nairutya southwest when those sweat starts to fall it becomes uh, i mean small plant starts to grow and that we call it as the babies of the white boar babies of the white boar in tulu is called as panji kurli panji means boar a white boar kurli means the babies so we find the reference of panjurli even in the vedic scriptures uh, in varaha avatar even in mahabharata there is a reference of panji kurli so panjurli also comes from that uh, this thing so um, it is as old as our vedic puranic scriptures this entire story is about panjurli and guliga you talk about kantara kantara hmm. yeah so panjurli is the soft motherly um, uh, guide who treats um, people of south kanra as their foster child foster children hmm. so he is very peaceful he is only looking after the security of the people guliga on the other end wherein at the uh, very climax he he turns himself into a dark guy with a dark complexion and he starts eating uh, during the climax he is guliga guliga is there for the protection of the people in his fiercest form he is very ferocious and we call him as the kshetrapala kshetrapala is something happened to me or to my property that is when i invoke guliga a protector deity to protect or to kill my enemy so that is what has happened see i uh, the villagers in that movie are very novice very innocent they don't know about uh, the cunning uh, character of that villain in that movie so he tries to gallop the entire property of the village that is when guliga comes into the picture till then only panjurli was there uh, to you know have the unity of the people of the villagers and the king mm. they uh, they wanted the unification of these two people but then the king or uh, that particular leader did not listen to the villagers request that is when guliga gets activated so these two are the faces of the same bhuta tradition one is the kama version the other is the fiercest version okay uh yeah. i'm just going to give a small 101 to many of the listeners who are not too familiar with kantara or even aspects of hinduism like this so Hinduism uh has many different sects uh honestly which should be peaceful amongst each other but there is a small bit of competition nowadays i don't understand why okay. uh there's vaishnavism shaivism shaktism and more uh spread all over india the landmass of india has followed different traditions of sanatan dharma uh the word hindu is something that people from outside used to reference what is sanatan dharma which is a collection of all these practices correct so the stretch of land you're speaking about has some peculiar practices of sanatan dharma within itself uh there is a very big concept of deities across sanatan dharma right a deity is a manifestation of god correct it's the same as god it's the same as the the ultimate divine uh but when the ultimate divine chooses to express a version of itself in order to represent certain aspects of itself correct for example a uh, panjurli devta so it is somewhat related to vishnu bhagwan who is one of the key gods within hinduism In fort, who is yeah. uh basically considered god right so is panjurli devta 
बट इट्स जस्ट अ मोर कंडेंस्ड फॉर्म ऑफ गॉड फॉर प्रोटेक्शन फॉर ब्लेसिंग्स फॉर दैट स्ट्रेच ऑफ लैंड राइट ना वेन वी टॉक अबाउट योर कम्युनिटी ऑल दोज कम्युनिटीज इन दैट स्ट्रेच ऑफ लैंड देर इज एन इवेंट दैट हैपन्स एवरी वीक probably no every year every year yeah okay uh what's the event called that entire event is called bhuta kola okay so uh, bhuta means we we would have to have a periodic propitiation so it doesn't mean uh, we have to call that bhuta we have to meet that bhuta in the form of a human being that person or a priest is called pambada so it's the two way communication that happens so usually vedic gods it's just one way we visit a temple we pray to him we come back hmm. but this particular sect or this particular tradition believes in a two way communication okay. let's say we go back 50 years there is no electricity there is no security that we have today we have mobile phones we have light we have everything we have cctv cameras everything but 50 years back 100 years back we didn't have any of those things and mangalur and that entire belt is totally it's it's an evergreen forest so if you just stand out of your house it's and to filled with darkness so uh, say let's say it's after 6 o'clock till the early morning there's nothing but darkness so that is when you fear that is when you have to rely on somebody to protect you Okay. that is when the relevance of these bhuta radhane these sect of gods come into the picture yeah. you know there are limitations of the english language which is why i'm struggling to explain this concept in english right. uh, but maybe for abrahamic religions the way they are farishte or angels mm. this could be a parallel of that of course when you say that to rajashi nandi and advanced level tan- tantra practitioners uh, they might say that no no this is not angels this mm. is literally god Right. in a condensed form right um now the thing is when a lot of people witness a bhuta kola mm. uh they might even get scared especially if they don't understand what's happening correct you see yeah. a lot of these reels go viral where mm. people actually um g- invoking the deity within themselves right uh right. and it is a very intense thing to witness and that's what i think rishabh shetty tried showing in a very spiritual way through kantara absolutely okay that's right so uh, see uh, we cannot like rajeshri nandi says it is very difficult to connect with shiva it may take you many many lifetimes but shiva has sent his gana or his troop uh, to communicate with people so daivas are also a part of shiva gana and when i say panjurli it's a part of vishnu gana got it so we cannot connect with vishnu we cannot connect with ranveer so we have his managers Mm. whom i can connect with mm. so similarly we have managers of shiva who are a part of shivagana like for example in trishur in kerala we have something called as kutti chatan they are a part of shivagana they are 319 in number specifically created specifically uh, for that purpose say so if you are uh, very fearful then there is one deity who will take off your fear uh, if you have lost something if you have lost your gold ring then there is one more uh, kutti chatan who who will help you uh, bring back that golden ring wow so you are struggling with say speech there is one kutti chatan who will help you uh, come out with very good speech or stage fear or whatever all these petty things 390 of them we have recorded history of those kutti chatans so the head of that uh, Entire three ninety Koti Chatans is the brother of Ayappa. He is called as Vishnu Maya. Ayappa is Ayappa is the Shabri Mala Ayappa. Have you heard of Shab- Shabri Mala? I have heard the name Ayappa, but I thought it's another name for Kartikeya. No, 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 no. Okay, so it's another. He is the brother of Kartikeya, but he is not Kartikeya. So Ayappa is the brother of Kartikeya. Yes. So formed out of uh, the union of Hari and Hara, which is. Hari is Shiva, uh, sorry, sorry. Hari is Vishnu, Shiva is Hara. So Hari, in the form of Mohini, uh, have wow. you heard about the Samudra Mantan story, yes, wherein yes. Uh, Mohini comes and she gives that Amrut Prasad to all of them? That is when the union happens, right at the end. The union between, see, it is a 
cosmic allegory it's it's not the physical union it is the uh, symbolic union that happens between hari and hara mm. so vishnu and shiva entity come together to form ayappa got it similarly there is another brother there are four sons of shiva one is the famous ganapati uh, and then there is subramanya that's the kartikeya then there is ayappa then there is vishnu maya so ayappa and vishnu maya are found in kerala kartikeya is predominantly found in tamil nadu got it so all the major famous temples of subramanya are based in tamil nadu and in karnataka yeah i've often wondered why these deities are not spoken about in north india right yeah have you ever he he, he comes down to south india so there is this uh, i mean i may be drifting no sure. away from my topic but then there is this competition between ganesha and kartikeya that happens like whoever takes the three times whoever takes around the world for three times they'll get this famous fruit that was given by narada to shiva hmm. narada comes to kailasa and he gives a fruit and he says that give this fruit to uh, the intelligent son of yours and parvati's then shiva starts a competition and he says that whoever takes around the world for three times will get this fruit this fruit is called as gnana phala gnana phala means the fruit of the knowledge or the, or the fruit of the wisdom so both of them start their journeys and kartikeya or subramanya climbs on his peacock and he starts going around the world in the meantime what ganapati ganapati does is he takes turn around uh, making shiva and parvati sit in the center he takes around uh, turn around them for three times and then then he says my world are my parents so taking around around my parents is like a world tour to me so that is when these two shiva and parvati gets amazed with his wisdom and they give him the fruit in the meantime kartikeya goes around the world he travels all around the world and then he comes back after three uh, taking around the world revolving around the world for three times he comes back and he sees that ganesha is already awarded and to his utter dismay he fights with his parents and he goes to palani kshetra palani is somewhere near to salem coimbatore salem that's when that's where he goes and stands in agony and in anger that's when parvati comes to console him and he says you yourself are a fruit why do you have why do you want a different fruit from outside you yourself are a fruit of wisdom so that is when she says palamni palam phalam is fruit in tamil even in hindi it is called phal hmm. so phal ni ni means you you yourself are a fruit that is the stala purana of palani one of the most powerful and yet uh, uh, very significant kshetra of subramanya in south gotcha yeah okay so i think this is a great point to talk about the first time you have experienced a bhuta kola what were you thinking as a child i thought it's a cultural act of dance and drama okay. for me um, so i thought uh, people may come here at the center at the epi center and they'll start dancing and one will get the hallucination or uh, we say darshana in tulu and or kannada the most important part is the darshana that is when the deity comes into the body of the performer or the pambada that is where he goes into the ecstatic stage so that is the most important aspect but did you think it's an act or did you know that there's something spiritual happening in front of you when i witnessed it for the first time i thought it's just an act do, do you want to describe it a bit in terms of what do you see what do you actually witness as a child or now right now what I, do you i'm assuming that it's the same ritual that you saw as a child right? absolutely absolutely so why don't you describe the ritual first mm -hmm. then explain what you saw and then explain at what point you figured that what you're witnessing is also a blessing right so so there are about 22 ritualistic practices that they do in a bhuta kola it's a highly scientific highly step by step procedure that one has to follow while performing the act even when i say act it is act of god because we heavily rely on the deity to come 
so there are six practices which are done before the actual bhuta kola and 16 practices during the performance of bhuta kola so the shall i explain each of the steps go for it okay the, the first step is the organizer i uh, in hindi or in kannada we can say as the yajman he is the owner or the organizer of that bhuta kola uh, i may organize it because it is a regulation or a rule that i have to do it every year otherwise i might be facing some problems in my family or in the village so i would have to invoke him so there are lot many reasons as to why i have to organize and the same person does it every year it depends it depends so if it is a family tradition then the head of the family will do it the eldest of the family will do it if it's the village uh, bhuta kola then the head of the village should do it like the sarpanch um, or any politician should do it um, so if it is a village bhuta kola then it's a regulation it's a, it's a set rule that they would have to do it every year or every uh, once in two years that has to happen otherwise they are going to face the wrath of the bhuta we have seen it in lot many villages we have seen the wrath of bhutas like what happens uh, like fam- like um, sudden famine starts to happen this is fl- sudden flooding that starts to happen and then there are instances where uh, uh, people at, between the age of 25 and 35 uh, will not have a girl to get married with so there'll be rejections of the girls so lot 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 many things happen guys can we uh, organize a bhuta kola <laughs> go, go on go on <laughs> so th- these kind of things happen which are very much in the material aspect of uh, a society okay that is when we have to invoke why do people choose not to do it if it's a part of tradition because they think it's old school some of them may feel it's old school some of them uh, probably because of financial conditions they may um, just uh, there'll be some kind of reluctance because they may not have that money people may assume that they, he's a rich guy but then he might be facing some financial issues probably for that he may be reluctant so there are a lot of many, lot many problems that may happen but it has to happen okay if it's a niyama in in tulu and kannada we call it as niyama rule rule so if it is a niyama they have to do it okay so this yajaman will go to the bhuta kone like i have explained what is bhuta kone uh, he has to take bath uh, and then he has to carry a ghee lamp or else he has to uh, you know do agni diya has to be uh, lit in front of the bhuta um, and then he has to request him saying that i wish to organize a bhuta kola so you have to come that day to that arena and you have to make sure that the event occurs without any obstacles so this is the first process that the yajamana does so with all the ritualistic uh, this thing he has to go and approach the bhuta and then once that is done probably 3 to 4 days before the actual event he will say that the event will be held on this day it is a night long event it's not a morning event it's done in the night so he will talk with that deity and then um, w- what does that mean we call it as madipu madipu means to go and talk with that god How? saying that he will talk um, in tulu okay but the deity is already gone inside someone's uh, no 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 then? that that happens only during the bhuta kola this okay. is the practice done before the bhuta kola like how we talk to god in any of the temples we go to this bhuta kone and then okay. we say uh, we've organized this let's assume this is a bhuta kone and i'll go to uh, the bhuta kone and i'll lit a ghee lamp and i'll take the permission that i am organizing that this i am so and so person belonging to so and so family and i wish to organize this uh, bhuta aradhana i want you to come and make sure that this event happens without any obstacles okay so in kannada we call it as uh, uh, sanga vagi nadiyabeku sanga means without any obstacles okay. so this is done once this is done he tells or he uh, there are the employees or the farmers who are working in the field he will let them know that they have to go into the field and cut a bunch of banana fruit not fully ripe say green bananas and then they take that entire bunch you, you know this entire bunch of banana right so they take that and put it in that bhuta kone okay. saying that we we just 
we have not just spoken about it we are very serious about organizing this that's the reason we have cut the banana fruit and we are keeping it in front of you this is basically some format of tantra also where you're offering yes um uh yeah offering food for the deity yes you're trying to invoke the deity yes okay. not just that we are telling him that we are very serious about the happening mm. we are very serious about the organization of that uh, event on that day so cutting of the fruit means we are ready mm. understood with the event and we have to make sure that uh, this banana should not be touched or eaten by rats squirrels or any kind of birds so it has to be a purified uh, banana bunch that we have to keep okay uh, if there is a uh, i mean if rat or any of the animals eat it then there is the ullangana that happens so he we may have to face the wrath of the god during the event that happens sometimes it happens so what what happens um, during the event he may shout at us he may shout at the organizer saying that um, it was eaten by a rat you've done a mistake and he has to do a paschatap he has to do something to again um, say sorry okay in some of the other manner yeah okay so this is the second part the third part is dolu leppu dolu leppu is the uh, there's a community called koraga they are the tribals or the harijans of that region they are very close uh, closely associated with the practice of bhutakola this is not the inhabitants of the villages they are they are okay so i mean the entire land is filled with forest even uh, even a normal man will stay in the forest even the koragas will stay in the same forest but there's a division as in there are the tribal folk and then there is village folk yes okay. now um, the division is slightly uh, decreasing got it uh, before that there was a demarcation but they'll pray to the same deity absolutely absolutely and i'm also assuming that every village will have its own deity yes in the same no. way that we have kul devta this is somewhat like that this is the kshetrapala deities this, okay. this is for the protection not just one we may have three we may have five we have we may have seven got it so, so this entire deity is attached to a stone if you have seen kantara the king or the people goes into the forest and looks for that particular stone yeah so the entire uh, practice revolves around this stone and we find that energy of that deity inside that stone this stone is kept on a pedestal in that bhutakone okay right so this is very closely i mean more than the brahmins or more than the uh, i mean there is no upper caste lower caste nothing as such because this is a unifying event wherein there is no difference between any of the there is no caste play here hmm. there is no religion play also so these people are closely associated okay uh, the koragas so what they do is they go to every each and every household and they dolu is that dol that you see they go on announcing it's the kind of marketing promotional activity that happens that uh, bhutakola is organized on so and so date so we request you villages to come and be a part of the bhaktagan uh, be like become a de devotee in that particular event so this is the third most important activity these are the three things which is done way before the actual event then comes the fourth most important is the ganapati deepune wherein um, they take mud from uh, the place where the event is held in a mushti uh, like they take it from the ground and they make a like they make in the shape and then they put it on the ground and have a, a hibiscus flower on top of the mud formation and they say we are praying to ganapati to um stop all the obstacles to happen for the event that is coming up how do you know all this in so much detail i have seen that okay i have seen i have gone okay. there have you organized no 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 okay, okay. i am too young to organize you are too young to organize yeah, that's also a thing because there are elders in the family who will take care of these activities do you think you we'll organize at some point in your life probably is there an elder in your family my father is there he is an organizer yeah. he uh, he has his brother also okay <laughs> so there's this elder brother 
and then we have my father has a lot of cousins who takes care of this they are in mangalor right now okay. they are in that region uh, so they take care of all these activities but it's a part of your bloodline absolutely yeah so okay. there's uh, since i am a i come from a brahmin tradition we have a temple uh, wherein we have a kuladevata so there's a person who takes care of the proceedings of the kuladevata then there's another guy who takes care of our naga like i have mentioned you about the three fold practices there's one guy who takes care of naga there's another uncle of mine who takes care of all the bhuta i think we have three bhutas in our family itself you mean three different deities that can be summoned during a kola yes okay so if i organize a bhuta kola if my family organizes a bhuta kola there will be three bhutas in the same in the same event. arena in the same event that's too electric in terms of energy absolutely yeah yeah so, and all three are very different all three are different their stories are different their past lives are different different so there's no uh, i mean there's no they are connected but the stories are very different very unique nature is different nature is different like for example there are bhutas who come from brahmin tradition they are very calm composed like panjurli type panjurli is not from brahmin tradition it is a, a totemistic as in animal background like we have bhutas which which have come from animal um, lives like for example panjurli can be attained to wild white boar then there is pili chandi which is from tiger origin then there is pili bhuta which is from rat origin like if a bhuta has to come in that event he'll wear a rat mask if a pili chandi has to come into that event he'll wear a tiger mask so all the bhutas are different uh, in itself and the characteristics are like those animals yes yes they may start uh, acting like a tiger so th- there is this 16 procedure that i mentioned I- i'm going to talk yeah, about it in detail so that is when they show their characteristics there are uh, ferocious spirits uh, f- from ra- rajasic backgrounds like they were uh, um, soldiers at one point in time they were safeguarding forts they were kings or princes at some point in time they've got into the daiva fold so a lot many stories right now uh, i have also referred to a book by lakshmi ji prasad she has mentioned about 2330 daivas all together okay. present from karwar to kananur in kerala so that's a huge research that uh, she has undertaken um, it was started by two britishers commissioned by the british empire uh, in 1897 but they wrote in english saying that it's a devil worship yeah. but this is not a devil worship yeah. it is not devil it's a positive nature spirit a lot of people all over the world would look at it that way but Correct. if you're from india you'll understand what it is yes true um anyway go on <laughs> so uh, these two guys noted about 133 variants of bhutas then there is one more professor in 1985 he he mentioned about 295 bhutas right now in 2023 we have reference to about 2330 bhutas okay and in our family we have three bhutas okay um, so i have explained about the five rituals which are done before the event uh, and i have explained about the four rituals the fifth one is the uh, procession that takes place from bhuta kona bhuta kone to the arena the event where it happens you might have seen that in uh, the movie wherein there's a guy who's throwing the crackers and then the police is getting irritated in kantara so that is the procession that is taken that that is taking place in that event so they have a pallaki um, a, a chariot kind of a thing wherein four people hold it and they take it from that uh, bhuta kone to the arena that's a huge huge Uh, i mean it's a event with a grave, celebrated with great pompous so so to say that people has to know about the procession that is happening so coming back to the main event so the performer or the pambada will start to uh, put mukavarnike on his face that's very important applying color on the face based on the characteristic of the bhuta so if i put black on my face it's very ferocious 
then there is yellow white red so depending on the characteristics of the bhuta he applies mukhavaranike that's when the first process of self self hypnosis starts in that person so okay. once he applies color that's when he thinks he is invo- invoking that daiva so in the meantime his sister or his mother or his wife will start singing pardana pardana is a ballad uh, about the heroics of that bhuta say if i am applying uh, if i want to invoke panjurli then the b- women folk will start singing the pardana of panjurli that is when the slow hypnosis starts that's when he starts shaking his body have you witnessed this yes yourself? yes yes it's it's a public event okay so at the corner of that arena he starts to apply and then uh, the hypnosis starts and you can witness the hypnosis happening yes yes okay. very much so and then once he applies that color then he goes ahead goes ahead and he puts on this headgear based on the characteristics everything happens based on the characteristics of that puta so there's a headgear that happens there's this yade yeah, kattu chest gear that happens and then the most crucial part is the gaggara which is unique to the practice of bhuta kola gaggara is the anklet made of metallic material um, he, he it is kept in front of the bhuta kola uh, in front of the bhuta he picks it from there uh, he takes the blessing of that bhuta he picks it and then he starts to dance that is when the actual invoking happens so he holds it it has to be put on the anklet but then before putting it on to his feet he starts doing this so if you have observed any of the bhuta kolas they do this and they start dancing they start start to get into that trance this is the actual transformation that happens you know and a lot of skeptics would think that all this is an act but people who witnessed it know that at this point something happens right. i've been fortunate enough to see a kola no i don't think it was like the full uh, demonstration of it but there is a temple outside mumbai where a bi weekly kola happens mm, mm. there are also temples where this can happen like right. every 2 3 days there is mm. a kola mm-hmm. it is a thing right it is a thing okay. i mean it is being organized by different people probably at the same arena okay got it okay it's go not ahead. done by the same party yeah organized by different parties probably the one i saw was a very small one it wasn't even a fierce cola okay when the deity came out i mm. think coconuts were thrown huh, uh, right. before the deity came right, out and right. when the person in the trance appeared there were people around me who fainted right right i was just like awestruck okay. i was seeing this trance okay. going on mm. and this is very new for me mm. so i was just in a very absorbing mindset mm. but people around me were screaming falling down right what's happening in the environment when this trance is going on this entire environment becomes a theater because he will start dancing with the gagara that's a very unique sound uh, you can play you can play it later that's a sound wherein we are invoking the daivas and it may hit anybody since the energy of the daiva is coming into that arena not just in his body into an entire arena or village so few of the ladies may faint few of the elders of the family may faint they may feel some kind of levitation or vibration in the body that happens these are the things that happens because if if a monster monster as in the uh, energy monster not in terms of negative connotation if a highly energy is coming into our uh, surrounding then people are going to feel it's like how you feel warm around a fire absolutely mm. something like that so it is uh, directed towards that person pambada uh, he is the epicenter but few few of uh, the others who are sitting there may may feel the energy okay so it's a common common thing that happens if a, if a new person is witnessing that he may also faint mm. so but but for people in that region it's a common practice okay so he starts dancing that once he's done he puts it into his anklet and then he takes his kadsale kadsale is the sword and then he takes a bell on his left hand and he starts to perform uh, this happens and this is a very uh, um, i mean uh, good to see it some kind of entertainment can so, can also be mixed with it so people come here to see that kind of dance and it's a very unique ritualistic practice that this per- person performs so there are about eight types of ritual ritualistic dance that happens 
so we call it as nalike in tulu so after this process then he takes rest he drinks coconut water he drinks intoxicated coconut water as well we call it as sendi uh, sometime he consumes that and then once that is done he'll give prasad in the form of uh, ganda uh, ganda means uh, um, saffron mixed kumkum so okay. he gives that prasad to everybody and if we have any questions or any judgments that has to happen he will be there for us he will warn us in case we are two brothers and somebody is cheating the other he may warn that brother that you are cheating your own brother make sure you don't do that is the word from the deity itself it's a warning then after the warning he may also confront Uh, he may also be very very angry and he may also um, start shouting for va- varied reasons fourth one is the comforting so he will say i am there for you people you need not worry about anything say let's say there is a tsunami that is happening in the eastern shore of india in tamil nadu and this panjurli or this deity will say i am there to protect you in mangalore so people psychologically will think uh, these deities will sa- save us from tsunami so that is the kind of impact these deities have wherein if they say a word it is like a judgment so he also acts as a tribunal solving a lot of issues i think in ancient greece this was called oracle absolutely very absolutely. similar to oracle yes it is an oracle what what is an oracle for people who don't know what that word is uh, oracle as in he also gives prophecies he may say don't do this something going to happen tomorrow you you are not supposed to do it Uh, and then see we uh, uh, people start cutting trees there is a forestation that happens suddenly a deity will come and warn us that if you do this this is going to happen this is the oracle that happens so and people have questions uh, like astrological questions uh, they will be asking about uh, various questions to deities as well whether i am planning to do this is it okay i am planning to build a five star hotel in this region is it okay that's when the deity will say no don't do it or yes or yes or yes i am there i am mm. there to protect and make sure you prosper in that business so, is is any physical interaction like this will, is the physical interaction no, that happens through that person i meant to say will the deity hit the person ever sometimes really? there are yeah there are uh, like the deity hit someone yeah yeah like what he may just slap hard hard soft okay all kinds of uh, confrontation that happens you've seen a hard slap i have slap? seen i have seen i have seen why why um, did someone get hard slap probably he may be standing there uh, questioning the deity questioning the very existence of the deity or acting stupid um, standing in front of them in disbelief hmm you are just a person you are not the deity probably this is what is in his mind that person's mind and suddenly the deity may come and slap there's this small practice called saben depune wherein the deity comes and stands in front of each of the individual sitting in front of sitting in the front row he checks whether this person has come whether this person has come so you have organized this event the deity will make sure your brother your mother your father your sister your wife everybody has come to that event if your brother has not come to that event he will ask you where is your brother he may question you through symbols or he may ask you also where is your brother where is he what is he doing right now this may be the question so i have seen such acts um, um let's assume that i am sitting in the third row the deity cannot talk so he uh, i have a daughter he may ask so Got these it. are the um, postures that they make through gestures they make yeah ask. through gestures so and i feel taken aback how does this deity know i have a daughter or not okay so this is what is making people come back um, to organize to perform because when you know that there is something unknown which is bigger mightier than you then you will have to rely on that energy when you experience it you know that divinity exists within it very true until then you might keep doubting but when yes. you see it with your yes. own eyes yes okay yeah
uh you've interacted with a deity yes yes we want to share that experience um my father in law had organized one uh, bhutakola in in a place called bontadka a very very tiny village near mudubitre um, so he wanted he went and approached the deity and and said that my son in law has to have a good business run so make sure that the business is run very well so and then that's when the deity said i will be there to protect your business you need not worry about it and then he may give a kunkum or a leaf whatever in his hand there's this arecana leaf the plantain we call it as adike in kannada the tobacco arecana plant he may give that um, as a mark of blessing or as a mark of uh, a good gesture we may have to keep it in our uh, business entity what deity was it it was panjurli same as kantara same as kan- kantara yeah panjurli is uh, well spread in the entire region okay why panjurli is because people there rely on agriculture and panjurli is a deity wherein she protects the crops of the um, i mean of that region so which is very important see there is security and protection of the people security and protection of the livestock like the cows the cats the dogs everything most important is the protection of the crops against rain against ex- excess rain and against uh, pigs eating them against peacocks destroying them we have a lot of entities which comes and destroys so we want panjurli to protect it so whoever comes from agricultural background who have who are zamindars jagirdars they all have panjurli as their protective deity did your relationship change with panjurli after this yes yes in what i have a small uh, story to tell sure i i am a full time baker i run food processing units in karnataka um, i was served a notice Uh, i had built a big the biggest food court in hubli uh, that's the second largest city in karnataka i had built a, a food court with about 16 stores it was doing fantastically well it it was a flourishing business i got a notice from corporation of that city saying that uh, that building is not uh, does not have uh, fire protection some some a lame excuse from the government and i was served a notice and in next two days the entire building was demolished what yeah entire food court was demolished so it was a flourishing it, it was a landmark property in the city so it was a bar and restaurant before and uh, i took that off and i did a good neat very very uh, approachable food court in the city for families for families for everybody mm. so it was a great landmark suddenly i was served a notice and it was destroyed that is when until then i was um, I, i used to go to temples i used to go to these bhuta kolas but i was not very serious about it um, once this thing happened it was a big hit for my business uh, because if if i have to speak financially i had invested about a crore plus money in that i was taken aback i was not disappointed but i had guts in me that's okay but then uh, uh, that is when i have i thought of going back to my roots my roots in south kendra my roots in mood bidre mangalore when i went there me and my mother went um, we visited our kuladeva we paid homage tribute to our daivas while coming back we take a usual Uh, road map from hubli to moodbidre that day i decided to take a different route let's try a different route and then we got into the deepest of the deep jungles inside karnataka and while driving on my left side i could see a temple on the brisk i mean the end of this left eye i could see one temple which i passed by i thought i i stopped my vehicle i thought of coming back when i came back i saw it's a temple of korgaja korgaja is again a kshetrapala he is a uh, that you've seen in kantara the climax this thing guliga is also kshetrapala so guliga and korgaja are very similar very fierce fiercest form ferocious forms of bhutas 
so i went inside and i said uh, there was a pujari who was conversing with korgacha in tulu uh, and then uh, we said we have come from hubli we just going by we we just passing by we just stopped he said no korgacha has called you something has happened to you in your town something on a very big scale has happened to you in your town that is when korgacha has called you here you and your son and he was talking to my mother so he said korgacha has called you and your son and he will make sure that he will protect you and your property there in hubli when you're saying he was talking to the deity you mean he was in that room the booth bhuta no no this is a temple okay so we have korgacha temples open for public okay bhuta kone is for individual properties understood so there is a temple for open for public and the priest was in communion with the deity yes because through that priest judgments pass on like the priest so, was an oracle in some yes, ways yes 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 he was an oracle and people gather there to seek justice because they they cannot wait for years and years in um, in the indian jurisdiction uh, they go for a quick solution so he was talking with that deity and then that's when we entered we entered we went to that temple for the first time we had not seen the temple before we had not traversed through that way before in my 32 years 33 years i haven't gone to that route i was taken aback when that priest said something happened to you in your city and he will stand there and you need not worry once he said that i came back and opened seven more stores i had lost one crore i had lost my food court one after all these things i visited my uh, native uh, kuladeva and i visited korgajja and when i built seven stores i was like these gods are there with me to protect as so your this business grew seven times technically yes yes seven x yes. growth when the demolition happened i had only three stores left and uh, soon after the demolition when i went and met korgajja i came with 10 stores say within two or three months two or three months yes so this i see as a miracle or guidance given by these deities as in the money just came into your life there were a lot many people who came asking for franchise so i gave uh, new franchises there were a lot many opportunities that came by for mm. me to open this is what people don't understand i want to share something yes uh, from my eyes as well mm -hmm. the deity that i'm worshiping right now I'm not going to name it. I think many people know it already, but I've been told not to talk about it often. But there is a particular deity I'm worshiping. Mm -hmm. um, I have spoken about it in a few episodes. I feel that since I've started worshiping that deity and doing the mantras upon that deity, um, things have started flowing much faster in my life because opportunity came and visited me. Yes, I feel I was the same person two years back, and if I'd got these opportunities two years back, it would have happened then. But opportunities and their timing are not in your hand correct which is what people need to understand absolutely that there is something called divine timing at play right. uh, but when you connect with the deities maybe sometimes that divine timing can happen earlier right right do you, do you agree absolutely i mean you have to i mean it depends on you whether you are mature enough to take that opportunity or if you are open enough to have faith that this correct. happens in correct. people's lives correct do you think that when you meditate and when you take up kriya or right. when you just take up you know higher forms of meditation it's like you're kind of accumulating some kind of points or washing away your past karmas yes. which then allow you to have deeper access to the deities exactly this is what kriya is very important for you to wash you cannot wa wash the past karmas you can only wash your present karmas so if somebody does shraddha why shraddha is important is you are you have a past life you were born in some form in your previous life so somebody related to you performs shraddha today you some, mean you mean someone from your past life yes yes the family you were born into then yes has a descendant who has performed a puja today yes and you will get the benefits in this life exactly that is the science behind shraddha why shraddha is important is because of this because somebody doing shraddha today to your past life will correct the misdeeds of your past life and give blessings in your 
today's present lives shraddha is a puja done during shraddh yes shraddha is uh, every year shraddha happens praying that soul okay wait we'll have to slow down a little bit i hmm. understand what you're saying but i just want to keep the listeners with us hmm. uh there is a phase every year called shraddh where in sanatani tradition you are supposed to pray for your ancestors correct the ones who have passed away right now also according to sanatani tradition when someone passes away they spend some time in other realms and then usually come back or take a birth again correct now, maybe they're born in a family which is different right you don't know where they are right but when you pray for their souls hmm. during shraddh they are benefiting in this life so exactly. that same soul which was your great grandfather your great great grandfather who you may have even met right is now some child somewhere yes who's having some possibly spiritual right. experience or his life is becoming easier because you are praying for him or her exactly this is the signs that we follow okay i did something called nagabali and um narayan bali this year right after my 30th birthday they say that when you perform this kind of a puja with faith um certain karmas get lifted off your ancestors they say nine generations of right. your ancestors right. get benefited right uh when they talk about pitru dosh which right. is your male lineage having some kind of flaw so maybe someone has committed a sin someone has um committed a suicide or yeah. had a bad death unnatural death uh, accident something yeah. like that yeah. their soul is going through a lot in other realms but right. if you as the descendant break that generational curse right. through right. these slightly higher level pujas right uh you not only are you relieving yourself but you're relieving your pitrus also who have probably also taken a birth somewhere else right. already right uh so i personally feel one this puja is not in every person's life or their destiny but if you do it a lot will change have you gone through a nagabali or um uh, narayan bali or anything like that no no okay but in in tulu culture is it there yes it is there it is there and they tell people to do it yes but yes. not everyone not everyone why if, if a person is suffering from uh, kala sarpa dosha or suffering from naga dosha that is when uh, astrologers or brahmin priests will tell people to do conduct nagabali so basically in your astrological chart if your astrologer is good enough they can notice that you have a dosha which is for lack of a better word a problem in your chart correct and in order to correct that astrological problem sometimes they'll recommend that you do it yes which is what happened with me like an advanced astrologer saw it and said that listen go do these things correct correct i felt the difference yes again it's for believers to believe and non believers to reject correct um Go there are a few uh, kshetras which are meant for the betterment of uh, your astronomical condition which is uh, related to naga dosha or kala sarpa dosha let's say there is kokke subramanya you see all the bollywood heroines going there because they might be suffering from uh, naga dosha or kala sarpa dosha what what did you say kokke kokke subramanya is that a temple Yes, it's okay. a temple dedicated to Subramanya, Kartikeya. Okay. You see so Bollywood that, heroines going there. Yes. Why specifically? You? They might be facing some kind of problem or trauma with related to Nagadosh. Same thing. Same Sarpadosh, thing. Nagadosh. Sarpadosh, Sarpadosh, Nagadosh are the same. Th- then there is Kala Sarpadosh. That's the even more the bigger version of the problem. a more intense. More intense problem. There, there might be problems with regards to skin issues. psychological issues there, there there are issues wherein you're not getting a uh, your next progeny so these are the problems that are being faced so that is when the ast- astrologers tell you to visit either kalahasti that's one of the most powerful kshetras of uh, uh, nagadosh parihar where is it it's near tirupati it's about 60 kilometers from tirupati so people going to tirupati make sure they visit kalahasti also Gotcha. so th- th- there they take off your naga dosha they take off your rahu dosha and ketu dosha so all three together really? these three yeah is taken off in in that place called kalahasti it's one puja that you do one yes, karma yes one karma that we do they make you sit in front of uh, rahu and ketu um, 
idols and they conduct it's usually a public uh, karma that they do so people or couple sit there say 60 couples at one point in time sit in front of the deity and they do this karma so it's a very very uh, very famous temple in kalahasti then there is this kukke subramanya do you know how long that karma takes it takes about 30 35 minutes that's for it. each yes and that is done in rahu kala itself it it is the only place in india where a karma is done in rahu kala what is rahu kala rahu kala is that 45 uh, time period in every day that we have that is uh, you know uh, supposed it is supposed to not do any good things in that time period if you want to do something good then they will check for the rahu kalam if it is a rahu kal then they'll tell you not to do it and they'll tell you to skip that time period of 45 minutes it's different every day every day it, it's different every day monday it is in the morning so at 6:45 i think so tuesday it's a different time in the afternoon so every day we have this 45 day rahu kal we are not supposed to do puja we are not supposed to do any good things in that time period probably we take rest or do nothing there's so much to unpack in india yes this this temple does puja on that time period yeah you know if you told me even 3 years ago about these things i would have had some kind of hesitation and thought of all this as ritualistic and just life and the podcast the people i've met the things i've heard on the show it's just opened me up to knowing that i don't know what i don't know correct um even this episode a lot of people would count it as like paranormal in some ways because it's just it seems so ethereal it seems so above human life right i would think the same if it was 3 years back <laughs> today i have experienced all these things and i am thankful uh, to the deities and the gods that have made me experience all these things so <laughs> i have been to kalahasti i have been to kukke subramanya so kukke subramanya is the place where he he protects the nagas subramanya protects the nagas garudas attack the nagas from the sky so these people rely on subramanya to protect so that's when subramanya comes and protects them so if you go to subramanya kshetra that is kukke subramanya if you type kukke subramanya in google you will find 1000 10000 millions of posts about kukke subramanya so he, naga dosha is said to uh go or ward off or diminish uh, if you visit that place okay have you ever felt fear during a bhuta kola no never 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 because they are there to protect us okay even when you've gone for a fear kola no i haven't okay i haven't feared at all have you seen people who fear it yes Pe- probably people from other part of karnataka or other part of india they will fear but not the local lights because it's in your blood probably and see the ecology or the uh, the entire demography in mangalore is such that everything is dark because of the intense growth of forest everything is dark and we see female student of say 10 years standing there in the bus stand and there's no one else this doesn't happen in bangalore or hubli or any part of india not in bombay nowhere else only in mangalore it can happen a small kid of 10 years standing in the bus stand without any fear thinking that there is a panjurli or a daiva protecting her so this entire belt i myself get goosebumps looking at the people's fearlessness probably it is engraved in them uh, that there is bhuta that is protecting them so that is the reason that is the entire purpose of why there is the practice of bhuta kola before i let you go there was one topic that you had brought up outside which is wrath right. of the deities right what does that mean we call it as upadra upadra of deities wherein if it is um, not satisfied not pleased with any of your acts Uh, any of your act means the family's act or the village villagers act something might have disturbed them so they start giving you problems what could the acts be say sudden flood flooding of the agricultural estate no no i mean what have the villagers or families done to upset the deity probably they haven't conducted bhuta kola they haven't say i have organized bhuta kola this year and i have promised that i will give some metallic throne or something anklet or something to bhuta kola 
I haven't delivered that promise. That is when I may or the village may face the wrath of the Bhutas or the Upadra of Bhutas. So that is when they start acting. So this is when we see that the presence of Bhutas are very much relevant. I have been hearing such stories from my grandmother, my paternal grandmother, who used to say a lot of such things because she was going from uh, one village to another to go to a school. So she used to walk, say, 8-10 kilometers. And she used to tell a lot of stories. Well, while coming back from the school, she used to see uh, a dia or just that light, that spark, traveling from one plant or one tree to another. And these kids, school-going kids, used to fear that. As to they could see going from one tree to another, one tree to another, all the way till they reach home. And when they used to come and ask, my grandmother used to come and ask her mother, she would say, she would say that it is the Bhuta who is protecting you. She is coming and that Bhuta is coming with you from the school to your house, uh, protecting you. When she said, I used to just put it aside and say, all these are folklores, folk tales, exaggerated tales. And now today I am sitting here with 100% belief that whatever stories my grandmother told me as a child is all true. Yeah. I think our generation collectively as Indians is also waking up to yes. our ancient culture. Which is why stories like this are out there on the internet. Right. I wouldn't have done a podcast like this even two years ago, three years right. ago. But things are very different now. And I strongly believe it's the will of the deities to have this knowledge turn into public knowledge. I think it was sort of cultural, sort of secret knowledge where mm -hmm. only that stretch of India knew about it. And now today all of India has access to this knowledge yes. at least. Yes. I, I thank my Daivas for allowing me, for selecting me to be a part of this very famous TRS show. I know. But I'm, I'm, I thank you to give this it's, opportunity. It's not me. Opportunity. It's my daivas <laughs> and it's my producers. <laughs> it's these two yes. uh, elements. Yeah. I'm just glad we got to do this on this show. I know that whenever we're doing episodes like this, it's not my will or my guests will. It's the will of higher beings. Yes. So thank you, bro. Yes. I hope that we did justice to the topic. Absolutely. Thank, thank you. you. Appreciate it. Yeah. So that was the episode for today. I know this was a slightly niche episode, but I'd definitely like to know from you guys about the other niches, especially when it comes to Indian culture, Indian history, Indian spirituality. What are the other things you'd like to learn? What are the other things you'd like for us to speak about on TRS? TRS is only getting started, shaping up because of you, the viewer, you, the listener. So send in your suggestions, drop your comments. We're always reading, we're always studying, we're always trying to give you the best possible work. Lots of love. We will be back very soon.